A 13-year-old boy from Staten Island, New York, took his own life last week. After being bullied by classmates at school, Danny Fitzpatrick attended a private Catholic school in Brooklyn. In an emotional note he left behind, Danny wrote that five boys picked on him relentlessly and that his teachers didn't do anything to stop them. To talk more about this story and bullying in school, I'm now joined by Julie Herzog, the director of Pacers National Bully Prevention Center. She's in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And from Nashville, Tennessee, is Lieutenant Scott Moore of the Wilson County Sheriff's Office. He actually holds a day camp for sixth and eighth graders on how to stand up to bullying. Lieutenant Moore, I want to start with you. How do you facilitate and run this summer course that aims at stopping bullying? What's the focus of the course? Well, one thing that we want to do as an agency and as a community is be very proactive in facing issues that are dealing with bullying. And one thing that we wanted to implement was a program that would allow uh, students from sixth grade through eighth grade to come in because there's a lot of programs out there that are geared towards high school age students. And so we wanted to build a program for the prime age, in, in my opinion, are grades six through eight. So we wanted to implement a program and it was uh, it turned out to be very successful. I remember those years, the middle school years, so tough, and I, I do know that it's really hard on so many students. Julie, I, one statistic that really caught my eye was according to your center, the Bullying Prevention Center, about 57% of bullying situations stop when a peer actually intervenes on behalf of the student. But what about teachers? Danny Fitzpatrick specifically called out his teachers in that suicide note. What can adults do to intervene, and especially if kids continue to bully their peers? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, so many kids don't tell that they are being bullied. And so when they do tell, such as Danny did, it's so important that we do three things. And the first is that simply that we listen, that we believe them, and we take it serious. Because it's not easy to tell an adult that you're being bullied because, you know, it's something that is, is not something that you want to be having happen to you. And the second thing is we can support them. And so don't minimize the behavior. Don't, you know, try not to give advice like, oh, just ignore it, it'll go away, or that's just part of growing up, or it's kids being kids. We know that bullying has serious consequences. And the third thing that we can do as adults, whether we're parents or educators, is to help our child plan and to develop a strategy so um, how they can respond to the bullying situation. And I say that not that the student has to figure out how to end what's happening to them, but we certainly want them to have a voice in the solution too. I was surprised to learn that boys actually die by suicide four times more often than girls. What do you tell to these young men when they come to these summer camps? When they come in, you know, the main thing that we want to focus on is to build their confidence up because they're going to be faced with a lot of peer pressures. And I know me personally, when I was in school, I was bullied a little bit because of my size. I'm six foot eleven, and so I was a lot taller than everybody else. And so it's important to have role models out there for males. You've got a lot of broken homes that are out there in the in the uh, this country and the world. And so we need to have role models out there that can build them up and, and to uh, lead them in the right, the right direction of where they need to be going. Julie, I'm curious. We know that gay marriage is now something that anybody can partake in. How has the LGBTQ community been affected by bullying? And what are you seeing when it comes to teens? Well, I think there's a number of groups that have been affected by it. We also were an organization that focuses on kids with disabilities. And I think, you know, so often people are targeted for differences, whatever that difference might be. And what we hear from most often from any child who's being bullied is they say, I feel so alone. I feel like there's not anyone that cares, there's not anyone that can talk to. So again, when a student is reaching out, it's so important that there's a response from the community, not only from educators, but bullying happens online it happens in our in our neighborhoods and so it's important that we all say that we have a role in being supportive of those who are being bullied letting them know that they're not alone that there are things that they can do to change what's happening to them I'm curious about social media in the past 10 years there's been greater ways of bullying especially through social media accounts how do you deal with that you know social media whether whether it's whether you're being bullied in person online it's still just equally as painful i think the interesting thing about bullying that happens online is that so much of bullying is very covert you know we even adults we don't see it in the school where you know as our parents they may not know about it 
but if there's something online it's there in print it's tangible you can see it there's evidence and you know that can be you can really take that and turn that to your advantage to show your parents or to show teachers and to explain exactly what's been happening to you and I think what's interesting when your parents read a social media post um, sometimes when you tell your parents that you know somebody's picking on me at school they may not feel the full impact of it but when they read that same post on social media it's going to it's it hits them in the heart. We hear that over and over again. And Lieutenant Moore, what do you tell parents who are trying to deal with bullying on social media? And very often you just don't know that it's happening. Well, the unique thing about cyberbullying is it's accessible 24-7, 365 days out of the year. And so at any time, at any point, uh, a lot of the youth go out there and they misuse social media. And so as a parent, I've got two children myself and, and the parent needs to be proactive and, and yeah, encourage them to do the right thing. Uh, at the end of the day, we know what the difference between right and wrong is. And so we need to encourage them and lead them in the right direction where they need to be. Julie Herzog, director of Pacers National Bullying Prevention Center, and Lieutenant Scott Moore, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank it's you. an honor.